Dr. Okon, a well-respected figure in Abeson Town, is a man of ambition. He studied medicine and surgery at a prestigious university in Nigeria, and he came out at the top of his class. He did his youth service in Abeson Town, and he vowed to do everything to help the community have access to a standard hospital. After his service, he worked for a few years to gather some funds, then he sourced for funds from his friends to build a state-of-the-art hospital in the small town of Abeson. Before he paid the town's chief for the land he bought for the hospital, he did not make his intention known to the chief. He told them about the hospital only after laying the building foundation. The chief of Abison was very mad at Dr. Okon because there is a primary health care center very close to where he built his hospital. The chief stormed the building site as soon as he heard what Okon planned and he told him to stop the building. But Dr. Okon replied that the chief is an enemy of progress who doesn't want the best for the community. He insisted that the hospital would stay there and the chief would do nothing about it. The chief told Okon that situating the same business in the same place is not a good decision, especially in a small town like Abison. But Okon insisted that the chief would be the one to move for him. Two weeks later, the chief's proposal for the PhD was approved and he began to work on erecting it beside Okon's hospital. Despite the fact that Okon saw this, he was adamant and continued with his own building too. Okon's building was completed within six months and the hospital was opened officially. The chief did not go for the opening even though he was invited. However, the PHC remained under construction due to lack of funds. Days later, operation began fully at Dr. Okon's hospital. The townspeople were happy with Dr. Okon for the huge faith and they began to patronize him. His number of patients increased daily and he was making profits. He was able to refund his friends money after three years and the hospital became his own. Five years later, he relocated his wife and two kids to the U.S. while he stayed in Abyssin Town. The PHC was opened in the fifth year of its construction, and Dr. Okon began to see a drop in patronage. His patients began to live in droves, and he would see most of them at the PHC. Dr. Okon wondered what was happening. Even though he made his service more affordable and accessible, his patients did not come back after coming to register for any courses at all. He complained of the huge cost and would settle for the PHC. Okun was surprised that even pregnant women end up registering at the PHC. He could no longer continue to think about the fact that he has a state-of-the-heart hospital, but not enough patients to keep it profitable. The thought of losing everything gnawed at him day and night until desperation pushed him down a dark path. His wife advised him to leave Abyssin and join her and the kids in the U.S., but Dr. Okun was adamant. According to him, he asked to show the chief that he has more experience in the business. He also asked to prove to him that he cannot close up his hospital because of him. One stormy evening, Okun visited an old and feared man on the outskirts of town, a well-known abolist feared for his powerful but sinister practices. Okun explained his plight to the old man. The old man held his palm and told him that the chief was responsible for the patients he had lost. My son. Those patients went to the chief's hospital because he used his charm to attract them to him. He has to keep the hospital running to enable him to get more funds from the government and steal most of the money. So you are a hindrance to the chief. Dr. Okon replied that he knows the chief was responsible for his plight. I know, Baba, but how can you help me and prove to this man that I have a more powerful man behind me? The herbalist then asked him his major area of specialization. Or what will bring him more money? Okon replied that surgery brings in the most money. The old man excused himself as he went inside his inner chamber. When he came out, he offered Okon a solution. Sprinkle this water on the road by your hospital. He said, handing Okon a large ancient looking pot filled with water used in bathing corpses. Anyone who crosses that road will either fall sick or meet with a strange ailment like stroke, hypertension, labor pain, or anything that will make them to be rushed to your hospital immediately. Okun held the pot, shaken. He knew it wasn't a good idea to strike people with hindrances just because he wants to make money. But the thought of losing the hospital scared them so much that they agreed to the old man's trick. What if someone sees me? What do I do, Baba? The old man laughed at Okun's ignorant question. No one will sue you because I will give you a powder. Rub this powder on your face every 3 a.m. in the morning and sprinkle the water on the floor. The powder will prevent anyone from seeing you. Okun was happy clutching the pot in his hands, but there was a morning. 
The old man told Okon, your family member must not set foot on this world, or they will suffer the worst fate. Okon, blinded by greed, agreed. He knows his family can never set foot there because they do not live in the country. And his siblings live far away from him, but he still called to warn them about the road. He told them to use alternative roads as he concocted a story about seeing strange rituals being performed there. They believed him, never suspecting that it was Okon himself who would rise before dawn each morning to sprinkle the cursed water. Soon after, mysterious accidents began to occur on the road, and the passersby would fall gravely ill. His hospital started filling up with patients, and he began to experience huge success. Nurses would rush to the accident scenes bringing the victims to his hospital where he was hailed as a savior. Dr. Kuhn's hospital soon became recognized around Abesson and the PHC began to lose patients. It became as quiet as a graveyard and one by one, the nurses and doctors were transferred since there were no patients to attend to. As Okun's hospital grew more crowded, he soon began to lose his humanity. He totally forgot his oath as a medical doctor and he began to pay more attention to making profit alone. Even when the hospital staff whispered about the increasing number of accidents, Okon silenced their concerns with empty reassurances. He never bothered about all the people he had affected in one way or the other, and he never imagined that his luck would run out very soon. Then came the day that would change everything. Okon's wife, Amaka, and the three children who had been living abroad for years had missed him so much. Due to the influx of patients at his hospital, Okon barely had time to keep in touch with his family. In the past, he would always visit them, but he lost track of time due to his busy schedule. He never thought that his wife and kids would surprise him by coming to Nigeria unannounced. Amaka had grown tired of the distance between them and decided to bring the children to visit their father. She wanted to tell Okon, but each time she tried to explain to him how much they have missed him, he would hang up the call to attend to another emergency. Before booking a flight to surprise Okon, she had called the hospital for directions without revealing her identity. She wanted to see the look of pure joy on his face when they walked through the hospital doors. On the fateful day, Amaka and the children boarded a car, driving towards the hospital with excitement. Since Okon never informed his wife about the course road, the driver took the road that Okon had been crossing with the course water as it leads to the hospital faster. And just as they reached the bend in the expressway, a truck lost control, skidding on the course ground, hitting them directly and sending their vehicles spiraling out of control into a nearby drainage. The accident was horrific. Back at the hospital, Okon's team rushed to the express road as yet another accident victim has been reported. When they got there, they found the car totally destroyed and rushed and the injured passengers to the hospital. As these events took place, Okon was busy in surgery, so he was not immediately aware of the identity of the latest victims. He only saw his staff wailing a stretcher with a woman three children in critical conditions. Without hesitation, he wore his surgical gloves and approached to examine them. But as he pulled the sheet back, the world beneath him crumbled. It was his wife, Amaka. He checked the other victims and found that it was his children. Shock paralyzed him. His legs felt like lead as his mind raced back to the warning from the avalist. He had brought this upon them. He couldn't bear to look at his wife and kids, let alone perform surgery on them. So he invited a group of specialists who he works with to save lives of his wife and children. Over the next few months, Okon refused to leave their side. His wife remained in a coma and his children are fighting for survival. His once striving hospital began to collapse as he neglected his duties, consumed by guilt and sorrow. He also stopped sprinkling the water given to him by the abolist until it became too late. The road became safe again and the flood of patients patronizing Dr. Okon's hospital disappeared. His nurses resigned one by one and the hospital, once the symbol of his success, now stood nearly empty, becoming a shadow of what it once was. But Okun did not just want to give up. He believed that the abolist would find a remedy to his situation. He returned to the abolist and begged for a cure or some way to reverse the course. The abolist's eyes glinted with cold indifference. There is no care for what you've done, he said. But there is one way to save your family. 
confess your sins to the entire town, and only then can you be spared. Okun was surprised at this. He replied, Did you just see what I have done? I thought the old water thing was your entire idea. I did not even know anything about getting customers through your documents. You introduced it to me. So you have as much fault as I do. The abolis paid him no attention. He kept singing and dancing as he went inside his inner chamber, leaving Okun sitting there. After waiting for more than two hours and calling out for the abolis to come out without success, Okun got up to leave. As he drove back home, he began to think of what to do. Okun was faced with a dilemma. Confess and risk losing everything, or keep quiet and watch his family slip away. The thought of losing his wife and children drove him to the brink of madness. He knew his wife would never forgive him for what he did, especially with the many lives he ruined, just for his greediness. In a dramatic twist, just as Okun was about to confess, a very wealthy man in the town approached him. His wife had been one of the victims saved by Okun's hospital, and he wanted to offer Okun a lucrative deal which involved partnering with him to expand the hospital and bring it to other cities. It was a lifetime opportunity, and Okun could have doubled his wealth with the offer, but he knew he couldn't live with the guilt after everything he did. The next day, Okun stood before the entire town, his voice shaking as he confessed to everything how he had caused the road, how he was responsible for the accident, the illnesses, and the death. Gasps filled the hair, and angry murmurs began to rise. Okun braced himself for punishment, but something unexpected happened. The townspeople, many of whom had lost their loved ones or been harmed, began to murmur about forgiveness. Some saw his confession as a sign of repentance. The townspeople forgave him, but he had to deal with the consequences of his actions. Okon sold his hospital at a giveaway price to the village chief. The chief, happy at the turn of events, told Okon to always do his findings well before making any investment. The chief also advised him never to underestimate what a community leader can do to keep his respect and power. Okon regretted his actions and he wished he had listened to his wife when the challenges began. So fights are not worth fighting. He beat his tongue as he realized that he was only led by greed and pride without thinking about the repercussions of his actions. Also, Okon's medical license was revoked and he became an outcast in the medical community. Months later, the hospital building was turned into a public health center operated by government team. Two years passed and Okon's family finally healed. His wife recovered from a coma, although their relationship was never the same. His children, scared both physically and emotionally, slowly regained their strength. Okon had learned patience and the true value of family, and he swore to never again take shortcuts in life. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share to enjoy more interesting stories like this. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.